A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts but always the same Spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done but always the same Lord. Working in all sorts of ways in different people, it is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as the human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit, because all these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one Spirit we were all baptised, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one Spirit was given to all of us to drink. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good evening and uh, welcome to another of these Thursday evening meditations by members of the ministerial team at St. Lawrence Church. Meditations mainly on the following Sunday's readings. Recently there have been no less than two landings on Mars. I know much more about the US landing vehicle uh, and the exploration that it's doing uh, than the Chinese. But I dare say that they're both powered in the same way through batteries, just like this torch. And just like the batteries in this torch, Eventually, uh, the batteries of those Explorer vehicles will run out of power. Oh, when that happens, of course, I can put a new battery into my torch. Can't do that on Mars. So the battery there has to be charged up in a different way. And it's done using the energy of the sun trapped in a photovoltaic cell. And just like some of us who are fortunate to have south facing roofs have on our roof to generate electricity and feed it into the national grid if we're very, very fortunate. Well, I put a new battery in this torch and as you can see, job's done. It's powered up. The torch works again. St Paul in next Sunday's second reading tells us that the Holy Spirit acts rather like a battery in each individual Christian. It empowers each of us to do God's work on earth and we do it in many different ways as we are many different individual Christians. The other two lessons in uh, the lecture for next Sunday give us two different versions of how the Holy Spirit first charged up the followers of Jesus, either by Jesus breathing over his disciples on the evening of Easter day, breathing into them his Holy Spirit, at St John's Gospel, or in tongues of fire coming down on his disciples locked in an upper room on the day of Pentecost. Well, whichever. 
the effects were dramatic because it, the Holy Spirit emboldened and empowered those early Christians to go out to tell the world the extraordinary story about Jesus, Jesus' life and Jesus' death. They were gifted with all sorts of abilities that made them excellent ambassadors for God and very effective Christian missionaries. So we can fast forward 2000 years and discover that there are literally millions of Christians followers of Jesus in the world today. And do you know what? The Holy Spirit is still being gifted to these people. Maybe in a less dramatic way than St. Luke described, a little bit more akin to St. John's way, I suppose. Um, there was an example of it last Saturday in St. Lawrence Church in Catford, when Jocelyn and Father Hugo brought Ica, their baby son, to church to be baptised. Because that's the way that Christians believe that the Spirit first flows into the life of a Christian today through the sacrament of baptism. But of course, the empowerment doesn't end there. From time to time, the burning flame of Christian Christianity within the believer they get lower and lower and be threatened with being put out by the temptations, by the many trials and tribulations that inevitably seem to accompany our journey through life in this world. And the latest example that, of that, of course, is COVID-19. COVID-19 doesn't distinguish between Christians and Jews, followers of Islam, or indeed atheists and agnostics. It doesn't distinguish between men and women, black or white or yellow or rich or poor. Coping with the problems that the virus has brought with it has sapped the spiritual energy of many of us. Or in the terms of the analogy that I used earlier, our spiritual batteries are running low and we need topping up. And God being the self-giving love has provided other ways for us to recharge our spiritual batteries. For example, we can pray. We can read our Bibles. We can use the other six sacraments of the church. And particularly, of course, Holy Communion. The church, clergy, lay leaders have struggled heroically to allow opportunities 
for attendance at mass to be available to Christians desperate to receive the spiritual support that the body of Christ brings to the believer. New hope for the future, new resolve, new strength to weather all sorts of difficulties and even support others in their need, in their with their anxieties. This comes from receiving into our hands a small piece of bread. But amazingly, virtual attendance at broadcast masses can be equally uplifting and I can testify that to myself uh, as I patiently wait for the time when I too can attend church and receive the body of Christ to myself when I can come and celebrate the Eucharist once more with other Christians. Martian explorer vehicles top up their batteries from the sunlight, from the sun. Christians also top up their spiritual energy in a similar way from the sun but christians spell sun not with a u but with an o
Now let's say some prayers together. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Love incarnate, fountain of mercy and justice, in a world of inequity and pain, may our actions be our prayer. We cry out for shalom, for peace, for fullness of life to all. Let the spirit of truth guide us. Let your spirit of love free us. Give us the compassion, the courage, the resolve to become the light we seek, that many may see life and their dignity restored. Inspire us to embody a world without injustice and prejudice, Form us into channels of your love and peace. Let the river of justice and mercy flood our imperfect world, quenching the thirst of parched souls and lands. Abide in us, O liberator, that we may become the word, so that the world may have life life in all its abundance. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and those whom you love, now and always. Amen.